Hey everybody, I'm John Cummings from BarefootAndRich.com. I'm the author of Killing Time Vampires and the creator of the Lawyer's Escape Action Plan. In short, I help attorneys escape the billable hour trap as their only way of making money and become fulfilled entrepreneurs when they learn to leverage their knowledge and expertise as highly paid experts. Today's video is about how you get the expert message that's in your head that you want to share with the world onto a web page so that other people can view it the way you're watching me in this video right now. And it's actually a 10 step process and we're going to go through each of those 10 steps really quickly first and then take a little bit of a deeper dive into each of those steps so that you can understand more of the process. The first step to getting your video onto the web is number one to choose an environment where you want to shoot that video and the second step is choosing the right equipment that you're going to use to shoot it. So you need the right camera, the right lights, the right microphone, the right tripod, etc. Maybe even a backdrop and those two topics I'm going to talk in more detail about in the next video that is in this series so that we can spend more time on some of the technology and uh, less time on the overall part which I'm going to go into right now. The reason for that is that this 10 step exercise is meant to help you get past the technological excuses that you might have to getting your message onto the web as your first experiment. So if that's you and you're, you're holding back on just trying out getting your message to, to web because you've got you know, problems with which camera, where to shoot it, the lighting, uh, we're going to skip those two steps for now and move on to the, st the third step which is to write a script about the message that you want to share with people so that you know what you're talking about when you get in front of the camera. And the fourth step is actually practicing that script so that you feel conf uh, confident and comfortable when you get in front of the camera as opposed to scared and deer in the headlights about what you're going to say. And that's true even if you want to use a teleprompter, which I'm not using in this video because I wanted to be relaxed and conversational. But even if you're going to use a teleprompter, you're going to want to write a script and practice it so that when you're reading it off the camera, you feel like you, you have some emotion in it and it's not just like you're reading with like a gun to your head and like a hostage negotiation. So um, step five is the actual video shoot. Uh, recommend a couple of things when you get to that point and we'll talk about those in just a minute. Uh, number six, you're going to take that footage that you've just shot and get it off your camera and onto your computer. Seventh, uh, once that footage is on your computer you need to do some editing in most cases. Um, so the video looks a little bit finished. Uh, your eighth step will be to take that video file that you've just completed and upload it to some place on the web. I'm going, to I'm going to recommend YouTube for you. And then your ninth step will be to embed that video into your web page. And finally your tenth and optional step if you want it to become viral in some ways is to uh, put a social comments plugin for Facebook below the video so that people can leave you comments, ask you questions, give you a thumbs up, and let you know that they liked your video. And it's a really great way to generate a conversation around your video once it's finished. So let's go back to step one and step two. As I mentioned, there's a lot to be talked about in terms of where to shoot, whether you want to have a backdrop, which camera to use. And I'm going to cover that in a pretty extensive video uh, in, in a video following this one. So I don't want to dive in too deep. And again, the purpose of this video is to help people who are thinking that they'd like to get, it, get some video message onto the web but they're hamstrung by all these technological considerations and I want to show you through these 10 steps that it can be really easy. So uh, to test these out, if you've got an iPhone or a digital video camera or you know, even if you've got a, a digital SLR and you have a mic pack already, you can use those, that would be great. But you know, I remember when I first shot a video just to see whether or not I liked the way I sounded or looked on video and I, I didn't, I hated it. Uh, I had a Sony Handycam and I set it on top of a bunch of boxes in my office and my wife thought I was a little bit crazy because I was in a dark room and you know I had this camera set up that didn't have any microphone and it, it was a disaster. But I shot video and I learned the process of getting that video file edited and put on the web which is now hidden and hopefully nobody will ever see it because it's horrible. But to get through the process of learning how to get it from my head to a camera, to a computer, and then to the web, I went through the whole process that I'm describing for you now. So take your, your iPhone, your Android, your, your laptop, whatever you need to do, and, and shoot a video, uh, and I'll talk about that in step five. Step three and four are very important. Um, one of the mistakes that people make is that they either 
read from a script that is really, you know, detailed and really dry and they sound like they're, like I said, like they're in a hostage negotiation with a, with a gun at their head. If they don't talk, they're going to be killed or something. And that's not the way you're, you're going to connect with your audience. You need to be real and you need to be conversational and you may stutter or trip on your words like you'll hear me do in this video a little bit, but it's okay because the people that are watching your video are watching you because they want to know what you're telling them. If they don't want to know, they're going to leave. And if they want the knowledge, they'll even get past what you think is a weird voice or, you know, an, an odd appearance. Just, you know, put on a nice shirt, get in a nice room and do it. But most importantly, you need to know what you're going to say. So I highly recommend that you take the time to write out a script of what you want to say, or at least an outline of the points you want to cover so that when you get ready to practice it, you sort of have an idea of the, the big chunks that you want to cover, and then you can fill those in with stories, examples, actual examples and knowledge of those pieces, uh, but you'll know what the outline looks like. The fourth step would be to practice that script, and I find it really helpful to just walk around my office. I do it in the shower, I do it in my car on the way to the office, and I just walk myself through it over and over and over again until I feel comfortable with my sentence structure, the ideas I want to convey, and you won't waste any time practicing your script, trust me. If you practice it, you'll be very happy that you did. The, uh, the fifth step is to actually shoot. And when you go to the second video that I'm going to give you about some of the details of which cameras to use, we'll get into a lot more detail about um, how to set up your microphone and how to set up your camera and your lighting. Um, but for this video, if you don't have all that figured out and you just have an iPhone or some other uh, camera that you're going to use, focus on this. Focus on your energy and your message for the camera and don't worry about what the camera is or how good the footage is going to come out. Focus on practicing uh, just being in front of the camera and just speaking to it and getting your message out in a way that is energized and activated. And my biggest tip for that is um, one that I just learned recently and it is that the attempt to relax yourself before you shoot video or before you go on stage for that matter typically has the opposite effect because you you find yourself trying to talk yourself into something which is already unnatural. There's no reason to be afraid of the camera, there's no reason to be afraid of the audience. People that are listening to you are listening because they want to hear your message. So. There's no reason to be, to be nervous. Uh, if anything, what you need to be is really excited about it and really activated. And I found the best way to do that is to, for me, just turn the music up as loud as I can in my office and actually jump around and get silly and clap and really get myself motivated to talk. And I find that the more I do this, the more excited I am to actually speak to you, my audience, about these topics because it's stuff that I know and love and want to share with people. So if you have that as your mindset, that the people on the other side of the camera are people that want to know what you have to say, that like your message, and that you want to serve with your message, you'll find this a lot easier than if you're just trying to say, it's okay, I don't need to be nervous, which I used to do and it was terrible, trust me. I'm not going to show you any of those videos, but you can just trust me that it was terrible video. Uh, step six, once you have shot the video, um, you're going to want to take it off of the camera and bring it onto your computer where you can do some edits. And if you've never done this before, I highly recommend that you maybe do one take of your video first, get the camera card out of the camera or plug it into your computer and get the footage off and look to see whether or not you have the footage that you were hoping you shot and that the lens cap wasn't on or that the microphone wasn't turned on or whatever the problem might be and make sure you've got the footage that you want. Now getting it from your camera to your computer sounds really simple if you've done that before, but for some of you, you might not have a camera that has a film card, you might have a tape camera, you might be using your iPhone. Um, what I'm using today is a digital SLR camera which actually has a film card in it. It looks like this, it's a little SD card, and what I do with that is I take it out of the camera, I plug it right into the side of my Mac, it's got a little slot there, and I drag the files right onto my desktop so that I can view them or edit them or manipulate them in any way that I need to. Uh, if you don't have, if you have an SD card but you don't have a slot in your computer for it, you can get at Walgreens or CVS or pretty much you know Office Depot staples for about 10 or 20 bucks a uh, card reader which can hold an SD card and all sorts of other formats and that's the way to just plug your card into that reader 
and then plug the reader into a USB port and do the same thing. Drag the file from that device onto your computer. If you have a tape camera, like an HD tape camera, you, or some other type of camera that's not a film reader card thing, then you're going to want to use whatever cord came with that and plug that into your computer. And depending on whether you're using Mac or Windows, the interfaces will be different in terms of what software is going to be used to move the, the files from the device onto your computer. And that's not uh, a big deal. If you have questions about your specific setup, uh, I'm sure there's 20 of us watching this who do know which uh, setup you have that will answer your questions in the comments. So be sure to leave comments below. Um, I talked about lighting um, at the beginning in number one and two. And as you might have noticed since I've been talking in this video, my lighting has changed because it's all natural light. And I'm hoping that it's not too noticeable because I'm going to shoot this all in one uh, continuous take and not have any cuts. So if you haven't noticed it, then I brought to your attention something I didn't have to, but I want to talk about that in the next video. So you can, keep, you can be aware of, of the changes in natural lighting and how sometimes people use only artificial lighting to overcome that problem. So step six was getting the, the footage off of your camera and onto your computer. And then step seven uh, would be to edit the footage if it's necessary. And unless you've got a camera person who's shooting it for you and is perfect, chances are you're going to want to edit some of your footage. If you have a Mac, iMovie is already built into your operating system, and that's the best program that I know to edit video from your camera, because you can simply drag it right into iMovie, open it up, and there's a trim selection where you can cut off the beginning, cut off the end, splice bad places where you want a little bit of a transition, and overlay all kinds of cool effects. And we'll talk about that in a, in a later video. Uh, if you don't have a Mac and you don't have iMovie, you can purchase iMovie, or you can use something like Windows Movie Maker, and I'll put a list below of a number of other programs that you can use to edit your video, just to give it like a finished look. And if you haven't used YouTube before, you'll notice once you upload your video that YouTube even has some editing features now that make it look a little bit more polished once you get your video up there. So I recommend bringing your video into one of those software programs. Use the trim selections to cut off the front and the back of the video where you were like walking into the scene or out of the scene. And then once you have that piece of footage from end to end, watch it a couple of times and see where you can maybe correct the color, correct the sound, uh, cut out places where you had to stop and cough or sneeze if you feel like it's necessary to do that. And um, you know, get yourself a nice finished video that looks good enough to put on the web and pass the red face test. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. We'll get to that in a later video. Uh, the eighth step. Uh, once you've edited your video is to upload the video to a hosting company that's going to actually make the video visible to people on the web. Your choices are YouTube, Viddler, Vimeo, uh, Kajabi if you want to crunch them as part of a lesson plan. But I recommend that you use YouTube for any video that you're going to put on the web for people to see for free that you want to get comments on and get traffic for. Um, we'll talk in later videos about the use of Viddler and Kajabi and when those might be appropriate for your business plan. But in terms of just getting a video to web, YouTube is the simplest solution and it's really easy to use. If you have a Google account, then you can easily create a YouTube account. And even if you don't, creating a YouTube account as a standalone account only takes five minutes or less. So you go to YouTube.com, follow the create an account prompts, and within five minutes you'll have an account to which you can upload your movie file uh, in a number of different formats. If you're using iMovie, it's even simpler because within iMovie you can right click your project and choose the publish to YouTube uh, function and just put in your email address and your password and you can even put in the subject line and the, the description of the video uh, to upload that to YouTube from right within uh, iMovie and then it'll tell you uh, when it's finished. Uh, I was reminded this morning through my own technological challenge that when you upload a video to YouTube, it's very important to not have weird characters in the name of the video or in the description and keywords fields. And it's just a weird um, sort of legacy problem that YouTube had that it took me weeks to find out one time. I was uploading a video and I, I tried like 50 times to upload this video thinking it was my internet connection, the file was too big. Maybe it was a corrupted file. And just by an accident that I had learned from one of my programmers on my website, I realized I had either a semicolon or an ampersand or some other weird character 
and YouTube was choking on that in the file upload process. I changed my file name and within five minutes my video was uploaded. So if you run into any problems uploading, leave a comment below. It might be something really simple that one of us can help you with. Step nine is once you've got your video uploaded to YouTube, you're going to want to put that in your website on one of your web pages. Um, if you're using WordPress, this is uh, deadly simple because you probably already have access to all your pages and you just click on add a new page and then you put the video into one of those pages. And the way to do that, and even if you don't use WordPress, you can do it this way in terms of embedding the code, is you go to your video on YouTube once it's published and it's ready for the world to see and you choose the, uh, the share button. And the share button is going to give you a URL, which you would normally just email to somebody if you wanted them to go to YouTube and see it. But once you click on share, you'll notice that there's also an option to embed or get embed code. And what that's going to do is give you a much uh, bigger area to copy and paste, which by default is about 560 pixels in width, which is typical for a web page that you're going to embed it in. Uh, you copy that text and you put that into your WordPress page or post uh, in the text or HTML view and not in the actual vis uh, visual view and by doing that you're telling the page to actually pull the video from YouTube and display it within your web page. It's magic. And here's a little tip um, that you might not know about. Uh, once you embed that code into your web page you may be wondering how other people have the video start automatically when you get to their page. Well it's very simple uh, you'll notice that there is th uh, some text that says, um, you know, various commands, you know, whether it's in English, uh, whether or not you can show videos at the end of the video that you're displaying. And one of the text commands that you can add to the embed code is called autoplay. And in order to do that, you need to put the, um, the, the text ampersand autoplay equals one, which is the command that means that autoplay is true or that it should autoplay. I'm going to put that text in the comments below or in the, in the description so that you can see that. Uh, it's really simple. You have to add it in two places and what that does is it tells the embed code that as soon as somebody hits that page the video should start to play. And that's really cool because if you're going to be doing a video that you want people to see, you want them to get the message as soon as they land on your page uh, so that they don't have any delay in getting that message. Um, the last and final step, and this is optional, would be that once you've got your page set up and you have your video embedded, you're going to want people to leave you comments to get feedback and also because using the Facebook social comments plugin, everybody who comments on your video is also essentially posting that comment on their wall on Facebook, which generates additional traffic to your video. So if you're looking to grow the number of people watching your videos, that's a really great passive way to make that happen. So the way to use the Facebook social comments plugin with WordPress is really, really simple. Within your WordPress control panel, you have a set of tools on the left hand sidebar and one of them is just simply called plugins. The one that I'm using on the page below is called uh, Facebook comments by Fat Panda. And if you've never used plugins before, it's actually pretty simple. You click on plugins, click on add new plugin and just search Facebook Fat Panda and you'll get a couple different results, but you're looking for Facebook comments by Fat Panda. You install it, activate it in about 30 seconds, and once you do that, you need to go to the settings and just choose um, that you want those uh, to show up on each page, either with or without your existing comments. If you have a lot of comments already on your web pages and you don't want to lose those or hide them, then you're going to want to check the box that says show my previous comments below the plugin and there's uh, a little bit of a goofy formatting issue with that in some themes. So once you do that, you may want to have somebody uh, reformat the way those appear, but on my page it looks fine. It's not as fancy as the Facebook comments, and it's not as fancy as the way the comments appeared before I added the plugin, but it's more than enough. So those are your 10 steps. You're going to basically find the right environment, find the right equipment, write a script, practice your script, shoot your video with or without a teleprompter, which we'll talk about in the next video, bring the video from your camera to your computer, edit the video as much as you think is appropriate, uh, publish that video to the internet on YouTube preferably, then embed the video code from YouTube to your web page and add a Facebook social comments plugin and voila. Everything that you've wanted to tell people is now 
no longer in your head or on a legal pad or on a, you know, some set of notes, but actually sitting on a web page in the form of a video that you can interact with people uh, with on your web page, just like you're watching me right now. So hopefully this was helpful to you. I'm sure I didn't cover all the questions that people sent to me about this issue, but I wanted to get like a real thin layer coverage of these issues from one to 10, and then we'll dive into steps one and two in the next video where I talk about what camera I use, what lighting I use, what setup I have, the tripod, the wireless mic, soup to nuts. So if you uh, watch for that email with that video, I'll be ready in a few days. And uh, I actually haven't shot all of that footage yet. So if you have a question about that, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll try to take that into consideration when I shoot my video about shooting video. Thanks and have a great day.